Okay, um, I originally wanted to do this in the office, but since my laptop decided, oh, I need to update, oh, I can't fucking stand, like, weekly ass updates, and I can't turn the shit off, so, but my laptop decided, oh, I want to update now, and it's in that fucking orange screen of doom and gloom, so I have to do this in my bedroom with my tablet, which kind of sucks, because I had shit I needed to read to you. But, this is a quick video game, dearly. Basically, um, PlayStation VR just rolled out last night. I was getting ready to go to bed when their Paris PlayStation's Periscope cut on. And they were all having, like, people waiting outside somewhere in New York to, to like, scoop up the, um, the VR thing. Let me turn it down so you can actually hear my PlayStation in the bag. So, um... Yeah, I watched a little bit. They were just talking to people. I didn't see, like, what was going on after people scooped it up. But that was what their Periscope was talking about. And it was like, okay, as you know, as I stated before, I'm not super big into VR. I just, I don't know. It's not my cup of tea. And I know that's the way the world's going to VR. Because regular, regular reality, as we know, is just god awful right now <laughs> so why not zone out with like looking like you're a fucking super villain with some shit over your face i like it's just it's just one of those things it's it's not for me they didn't make it for me so it ain't for me but that does not stop me from wanting to play porno games i would play the shit out of a porno game <laughs> but that's neither here nor there so when they rolled this out i guess um Resident Evil slash Biohazard got in on the fun of VR and they came out with The Kitchen, which is part for the VR portion of Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, or if you're in Japan, Biohazard 7 Resident Evil. So, um, I just watched it and I'll post the link to it in the description, but I just watched it and basically, um, it's a three minute, like a, like a three and a half almost minute deal where it just, you know that part on the very beginning when you turn on the Twilight Hour demo where the dude is in the kitchen and he's like, we got to get out of here. That part where my husband's always, when he plays it, is always like, why is he pointing a knife toward you? He should be pointing it away from you and cutting underneath the rope. It's that part of the kitchen. So, um... Like I said, I'll post the link, watch that first, and then come back at, um, three minutes, ding, 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 and watch, um, and listen to the resume, because this is going to be spoilerific, although, it's three minutes long, how many, spo how much spoilers could be in it, so, I don't know, but, okay, um, basically, now that you've hopefully paused this, watched, um, the three minute demo, and come back to this, you saw dude was cutting him up. The girl comes up and stabs him just like in the tape on the on the demo. But it goes a little further. That dead asshole dude that was an asshole the whole time, he actually tries to like fight the girl off after like she stabs him in the back and the knife comes out his chest. So he gets up and tries to fight her off, but then she starts stabbing on him all bad and like she cuts his head off. And when I watched it, I was like, either that was a sharp-ass knife or a strong-ass bitch. I don't know what the fuck was going on there, but it's one of those two situations because dude's head comes rolling out in front of you. And it's just like, okay, well, he was a douchebag, but he kind of didn't deserve that to happen to him. That's all kinds of fucked up. So that's what happened to him. She comes back, comes back behind you. And, like, she covers her bloody hands over your eyes and then proceeds to stab you. And, like, that's the end of Clancy, I guess. I'm, I'm taking all of this to mean that this is the precursor to what happens to Ethan um, when Ethan's going around. Now, the funny thing is, when we first was talking about Resident Evil 7... Wasn't it supposed to be the demo and all of this shenaniganry had nothing to do with the game? It was supposed to be like an independent thing. Now those bigger people are like Pinnacle A1. Was that Capcom just saying that to fuck with people? Or like throw them off the scent? 
or was that like I don't I'm I'm starting to think maybe I was hallucinating it, but I don't know. But I do remember like oh the demo has nothing to do with the game, so that's a little weird right there. But pretty much this is what I think. Um, Resident Evil Seven biohazard or biohazard 7 resident evil is talking about basically the chick that cuts that asshole dude's head off i think that's the girl because everybody's been like when you play the demo my husband didn't do this but i've seen people play the demo and they go up to a picture that's on the mantle it was originally in the first demo it was of jack and marguerite just standing there smiling before they got all fucked up um and now it's a picture of Jack and Marguerite Baker were sitting with their son Lucas and some little girl. But I think the chick who cuts that dude's head off is actually the little girl. And I've been saying this for a little bit. I think what the plot is, is you go in, you're the Ethan dude, going to look for your wife. She gets all fucked up. Either you find her or you find her dead. We don't know yet. But the Bakers are all fucked up with whatever virus of the week that's going around. And they're all crazy and fucked up with whatever virus of the week. And the daughter is the one, either she was causing the virus of the week to go around, or she was the primary guinea pig of the virus of the week going around, or something. And she's probably the final boss. I don't know, because you always need to fight, you usually fight, like, Cole Veronica actually fight some chick. So, I don't know. But maybe that wasn't, well, Tyrants were all male, so I don't know. Either way, but I'm thinking that's what the plot is. That she is either the primary virus subject or something, and they're all fucked up with whatever virus is going around. And um, the helicopter, are they watching this from that helicopter? Fuck yes, they're watching you from that helicopter. They probably infected your water supply or your food supply or your beer supply. Some kind of supply got fucking pl fucked up with some virus of the week. And now y'all all fucked up and just fucked up and messed up and crazy and stabbing people. So, I think that's what's going on. Like, all in all, three minutes for that is kind of pointless. You can't even defend yourself. You're, you're, you're the dude, you're the Clancy dude on the chair and you can't even really defend yourself. So... I don't know. I just see that, like, I, I know y'all want to get people geared up for VR. Like, <laughs> maybe that wasn't the acest of choices for getting gearing people up for VR. I don't know. It just seemed a little bit to me on the pointless tip. Oh, God. I can't do that angle. My boobs are huge. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get a good angle. I saw I don't like using my tablet because it's hard to get a good angle. Um, plus, I don't know where the fucking camera is to look into it. But, either way, sorry. Um, so, yeah, there's that. That was going on. Um, I wanted to talk about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Kuji Igarashi, if you don't know who that is, you have not obviously played Castlevania. Um, he was working with Konami, and he ended up leaving before all the shenaniganry went down with Konami. And he... Started a Kickstarter campaign that garnered over five million dollars to do the quote spiritual successor of Symphony of the N or not well basically it's called Bloodstained <laughs> Ritual of Night. I'm calling it Bloodstained Minuet of Darkness, cause you know I like to flip up video game names. But yeah, he he has some like game he's been trying to come out with. It was supposed to come out the beginning of next year. They done moved this nonsense back to sometime in 2018. I'm like, y'all, we don't even know what the world is going to be looking like in 2018. Can we please get some shit together? But they're coming out with it, and they got a publisher now. So that should probably make things a little easier for Kuji Igarashi to bring out um, Minuet of Night or Minuet of Dark, or Minuet of Twilight, or Minuet of Dusk, or whatever it's trying to be called, is, is, they're doing that to bring that out, um, and I guess, lastly, um, I really wanted to go more in depth in that, I wanted to read the article and everything, but whatever you buy article on, I'm currently using to use to film the fucking thing, so, I don't know, I'm sad, but lastly, um, who was lazy? Oh, I was watching, I've been watching, um, Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. Now, before y'all harp all on my shit, 
I'm not really a Five Nights at Freddy's. And I'll tell you why. Um, like, when Five Nights at Freddy's originally came out, my stepkids were all hot as shit for, oh my god, it's so scary. You get turned into, like, these bear suits like they have in Chuck E. Cheese, and it's so scary. And, honestly, I thought the premise was kind of cool. Like, you, you sitting in the spot, you gotta make sure the monsters don't jump on you and shove you in their bear suits or whatever. I thought it was a cool premise, but four games later, and it was still you looking in the camera trying not to get fucked up by animatronics. How much further are you planning on taking this premise? It's only so much camera looking people can do. And I never really got into Five Nights at Freddy's. I thought it was a cool premise. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I want a little more plot with my horror. If I'm going to be scared, I want kind of a story behind it. So I kind of brushed it off and was like, these kids don't know what scary is. It's scary, yeah, but eh, it, it could be scarier. So... <laughs> I watched, um, one of the people I do watch, like, watching their Let's Plays, I watched him do Sister Location. And Sister Location, because it had, like, a mild plot, was hilarious. I enjoyed watching it. I never really could get into enjoying Five Nights at Freddy's, because it was just, it was just, watch camera, block monsters. Watch camera, block monsters. Ooh. But, <laughs> and, like, jump scares are, are like, fun, <laughs> I guess, but, um, I don't know, it just wasn't my thing, but this one was kind of funny, and it had a little bit of a story behind it, so, I'm not playing it, because, one, I just can't go there, it's a computer game, and, and I am console queen for life, but, like, even if it was on a console, I probably still wouldn't play it, because it's a horror game, and I'm bad at horror games for as much as I love them, but I thought it was worth watching. It's, it's worth a watch, at least. If you're not into computer games or if you're not planning on playing, if you're not really a huge fan of Five Nights at Freddy's, most of the diehards of this series don't really like that one. I'm not a diehard of the series. I just like that particular one because, like, when you're on the elevator, the, the guy on the elevator is always talking shit to you. Um, the last thing, when the last thing she says to you is like, because of your performance, you're going to be bonused with a gift basket, which is going to be deducted out of your pay. And the funny part about that was, while I was watching it, the guy who does the Let's Play, he was like, what? When he was like, a gift basket. And at the same time, I was like, what? And then when he was like, it'll be deducted out of your pay, I was like, what? And then he said the same thing, so they just tickled me that, like, it was just weird and crazy, so, but check out, if you don't, like, check it out, just check it out, because it wasn't that bad, I've seen way worse, but it wasn't that bad, so that's all I have, and hopefully I can get my shit work, and I ain't going there, check on my laptop, make sure it didn't explode, and I'll post links to stuff in the description, I guess I'll have to post a link to the article I was going to read, since I couldn't fucking read it, and I'll see y'all later. Lee!